Welcome to the ITM Podcast. This is episode 196 of the ITM Podcast, the official Boston Red Sox podcast of CLNS Media, brought to you by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of CLNS Media Network. I'm Joey Capone. That's Scott Neville. And Scott, the 2024 Boston Red Sox, much like the 2023 Boston Red Sox, don't have a shortstop. How you doing? You're talking about the, the second place Boston Red Sox, though? Yeah, well, we can start there if you want to be more positive. Yeah, that's, they won the series. They won the series. They're in second place. They're winning they a bunch of games. They had the, the longest win streak in baseball for a second. Those are all facts, yeah. but they also are now without uh, a shortstop. So that's not true. It's a low tone to come in with. Sorry, that that might be on me. Our new shortstop, it doesn't even like hitting home runs, and he hit one anyway. I don't know if you saw that. Where did he say he doesn't like? He doesn't. He doesn't do that. He doesn't want to do that. He, he said he doesn't like hitting home runs. He likes to get hits. Like, can we play audio? Yeah, that's not where we were supposed to start at all, and I apologize for that. But hold on, let me see if I no. Now I need to hear this. Pablo said oh, this. No, no, no. David Hamilton. He's our new shortstop. Oh, David Hamilton. David Hamilton yeah. said this. All right, you ready? Go for it. Yeah, that's buffering. That was awesome timing. I know this is gonna sound weird, but I don't like hitting home runs. <laughs> I'd rather just what? get some hits. But uh, home runs are cool, I guess. He said that. What this? What is uh, what? He said that before hitting his first home run. That was that was before. And they did it anyway. You know what's funny is um, we'll just jump right to this. This is a weird place to start, but I, I you have to say it after hearing that. David Hamilton this year uh, has four hits. Three. Uh, three of them are home runs. What does he mean? They're okay, I guess. Is he, that's the only, contrarianism. The only thing I can think of is, is I think what he probably, I hope what he meant to say was like, when I'm swinging, I'm not trying to hit it out of the park. I'm just trying to like make good contact, but that's not even close to what he said. He just said, I don't like hitting home runs. Yeah. What he said was pretty cut and dry. And what he said was, I don't like hitting home runs. They're okay. I guess it's like, he sees it. He sees it go over and and he's like, come on, come on, go down, go down. And then it clears and he's like, damn it. Like, Oh God. (laughs) I mean, his biggest asset is his legs. So he could very well be like, God damn it, I don't even get to use my thing. Yeah. Right back in the dugout, just like I struck out. That's awesome. <laughs> right back to the dugout. I don't even get to play baseball for that long. That's the thing. When you hit a home run, nobody talks about this. You're not even playing baseball for much longer. You're just going right back to the dugout. Play the stupid song and let me trot, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Now He's I'm going to sit the back in the show. dugout like an idiot. Yeah. yeah get those lights off. Uh, all right. Well, Trevor, we should talk about Trevor before we talk about David Hamilton. Uh, Trevor's story goes down in game one of this series. The fourth inning moves to his left at a ball to a ball in the hole, goes down awkwardly on his left shoulder and writhes and screams in pain, kicks his leg, holds his shoulder. Uh, looks, I mean, it looks like in the most pain anyone's ever been. Yeah, he got. He, I think he got shot at the time he dove or something because that was bad looking for sure. It looked like one of those uh, injuries that you see pitchers get, like when they tear their UCL in one pitch. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Those guys who like like they rear up and then like you know ball flies out of their hand like straight up and they fall to the ground screaming, holding their elbow. It looked like that. So my brain did jump right to like ligament. Or tendon, you know, some something that Cassis would find delicious. Like I, and I was, I was looking, I was like overanalyzing the footage, just like the way that he fell and like how that, what would have been hurt there. And also, also, um, every like doctor account on Twitter that's like thinks that they can diagnose from watching, like I appreciate it to be like, oh, like, you know, it could be this, could be that. But like when they come in with absolute certainty and then are proved, wrong the very next day that's such a brutal look it's a it's a really really terrible look um but the raffi's reaction cora's reaction story's reaction were like they gave no room for any kind of interpretation it was like that okay that's instantly horrible 
Yeah, and it's weird because it didn't. Obviously, the reaction looked bad, but when I see someone sliding to make a, a stop at a ground ball, I'm not like, oh, this could be a this could be a season ender. Like that was a bold move. It's not like a you know. I guess it's more like a cut in like football, like a non-contact cut or something. But I saw that and I was like, it doesn't look like. I know he reacted like his arm exploded which is, was the scary part. But when I saw the play, I was like, I don't know. I feel like that was like, you know, pop that thing back in and let's, let's keep going. But that does not seem to be the case. The torn labrum, no. that's the scary one. That's what you have to be worried about. We'll find out tomorrow, I guess, probably late tomorrow. But if there's labrum damage, that's a real problem. If it's the, anything else, it might not be a season ender. So, yeah. So at this point, uh, it was, Diagnosed uh, the, as a uh, a dislocation Sub of sorts. Craig Breslow referred to it as a subluxation, yeah, which, yeah. as we all know, is when uh, a joint is dislocated and quickly relocated. Just boom, boom. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that does sound like that would hurt. That sounds like that would I mean, really hurt. That, obviously, I knew that. Obviously, I knew what that meant. Um, right. But this classic that, subluxation situation. Yeah, that definition is uh, ouch. Professionally, it's speaking. ouch. It's ouch. But um, so he is seeing a specialist on Monday uh, in Boston, and like you said, it's the labrum that like that will really determine whether or not uh, he's going to need surgery. Um, but there are a few examples. Um, in within the Boston Red Sox system of guys who have needed surgery uh, for a shoulder subluxation and guys who haven't. Uh, Miguel Blaze last year uh, did need surgery for it. Uh, you have to go a little bit further back into the early 2010s to find uh, a situation where it wasn't needed. But I think this tells the story more than anything, and it is the quotes from Trevor Story. Uh, you mean the ones where he was, like, crying, basically? Both – both those and then the next day. Um, once he had a day to gather himself, he didn't sound more confident. Here's here's the quote. Quote, it's a significant injury. It's just frustrating. It's not, okay, wait, time out. Time out before I finish this quote. I want you to try, for those at home, a lot of sentences in this quote. A lot of short sentences from Trev. Here we go. Quote, it's a significant injury. It's frustrating. It's not fun, man. Not fun getting injured. I'm going to miss some games. It was a freak thing. I'm going to miss some time for sure. And then uh, when asked about coming back this year, he said, I always have hope for that, which sounds like no, probably not, man. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a guy, a guy is telling you what it is, especially a guy who battled back, who last year came back early, you know, went opted for a surgery that would get him back faster, battled back. Obviously, it's impossible not to feel for him like crazy because, my God, what a horrible hand to be dealt. But if he is saying, man, I hope I'm good to go, he might as well, to me, he might as well have just said, no, man, no shot. Like That's how I heard that. When I, he said anything but, like, I'm going to do my best to get back. When he said, oh, yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I have hope. That sounds like, nah, man. My arm's fucked. This doesn't feel good at all. I'm I'm not anywhere close to playing baseball. I think the only silver lining with that is that he's obviously distraught from the many injuries and that he might just be going to the worst. Like obviously, technically we like he doesn't know yet until tomorrow exactly how bad this is gonna be. I'm sure he has more information than we do, certainly, and he that's probably where you're going. But the one good thing is that if if they don't know for sure what's what's exactly wrong maybe he's just already like of course again i'm out for the year but not yeah. really like having been told that yet just automatically just here we go again it but it just doesn't seem like him that just doesn't seem like yeah. something he would do i agree but three in a row of like big injuries i feel like that would maybe get you there where you're, you're acting a little more negative than you usually would it's i mean his whole contract has yeah. just been the injury list very sale like, yeah. which you love to hear. It was tough, dude. Tony Tony Maserati tweeted that, and people got on him. But as you know, it's one of those moments, I was like silently in the background, like I don't think Maz is wrong. Like mm -hmm. it does. Like 
I don't know. Like, it's not a knock on either one of them. Like it's neither their fault, unless you believe no. that Chris Sale riding his bike was somehow hazardous. Dangerous. To do. But yeah, yeah, but who would think that? What kind of moron would think that? Um, but Story and Sale both are are victims of the expectations of the figures of their contract. You know, when you see a nine nine figure contract. <laughs> It's really easy to say this guy better bring it, bring us his best. He better show up. And when injuries plague a guy, it somehow becomes like a a knock on them. Like I understand, you know, being weary to give a guy a contract because they are injury prone already. You know, to say like, well, do we want to give this guy money? You know, who knows how long, you know, how often he'll be around. But to no fault of their own, when they're just doing their job and getting injured. Like that just sucks. The whole narrative should just be that sucks. And I think that's what Maz was getting at, but who knows? He's probably just click farming. That's what he does, but it's horrible, man. I, I feel horrible for him. And let me tell you, I am in complete denial about the entire situation. I just still believe he's coming back like next week. It just, it doesn't feel real to me at all. Cause I think this is like devastating for this team. Oh, I, I completely agree. I think it's one of those things where it just shows you how much depth we have when right away we're looking at David Hamilton slash Pablo Reyes and and Emmanuel Valdez up the middle because yeah. two things happened. It took two injuries. One of them happened in spring training where actually Ron Grisham got hurt twice in spring training and they never like did anything to to bolster that position because they keep saying in 2025 we have a bunch of guys and so they're like let's not even get a veteran let's not get anyone on a minor league deal because marcelo myers in double a right now and that's frustrating yeah yeah we have we have six middle infielders they're just all 18 years old the there there's so many things that they could have done and i'll tell you now i, th I mean there's no chance they do anything but i saw people talking about like well who do they acquire now how do they feel the whole they don't guys they don't they're not going to and that i, I don't know if that year. sounds last i mean yeah they there there have been opportunities where like to fill a hole uh up and down this roster like they, they've had the opportunity and they didn't like if this was august and they were in first place i think it's a conversation you know do they go out and trade for a shortstop but Right now, I mean, but you just a whole year. A free agency just ended. It just happened, and they didn't do anything then. Not that they needed to to get an, an infielder at the time, but like they didn't do anything then. Why would they go out and be active now? It just doesn't. It just doesn't fit. It doesn't make any sense. And I can't sit here again and get my hopes up after a full winter of throwing out maybe this guy, maybe that guy. I can't in April now be throwing out like, well, maybe they. Maybe this guy can come out of retirement and play 60 games at shortstop. No, I'm not playing it. I'm just done. I'm done playing the guess who game. Yeah, with people like people that are talking about like trades for like a Whit Merrifield, like a like an actual player, like that's stupid. There's no chance they like do that. Of course, that, I don't want to even want to say that so confidently because that's that just makes me look stupid if they do it. But I, there's no chance. And the one thing you're hoping for now is is a Pablo Reyes type waiver claim last year like if they do some of that the other thing is some people seem to think that Romy Gonzalez is going to be a perennial all-star for some reason uh and he does look good right now so maybe that's the savior but it's probably going to be an in-house minor leaguer it's probably going to be either you know David Hamilton or you know what's Yu Chang up to right now where's he let's get that guy isn't on the phone. he somewhere I just I could have sworn I just saw him in a headline somewhere. Did he sign internationally? He either signed internationally or in the minors somewhere. I know he's not in the bigs right now. I think he certainly not. I I saw it was a couple weeks ago, so it might have been a spring training home run, or it might Rays. have been, you know, Japan. Where? Rays. Rays. That For the like eighth time. And you were right on 225-2024. He had a solo home run in the second mm -hmm. inning to right center field. Really? What was the exit velocity launch angle? You got all that? Uh, if I click that, I'm afraid that this whole thing is going to explode. Yeah, yeah we video, are. I just... 
we are propping up Scott's computer on stilts right now to make sure that this stream runs smooth. Sorry we didn't have a YouTube video on the last episode. Uh, long story short about that is that uh, our tech is all experimental. We are trying all this stuff. We didn't do any test runs before uh, we made the changes of this show. We just That's true. went for it. So That's true. And it worked for a couple of weeks. Yeah, but now we are uh, putting the training wheels back on. So if you're watching this on YouTube, it worked. If you're not, sorry about it. Sorry, it ain't there. Uh, but I mean, I mean, dude, honestly, I think go with the gut test with me. Go with the gut test here. Like they, okay. they don't do, they don't do anything about this, right? Like they just, it's David Hamilton, and that's that's it, right? Like that's that's their plan is just like throw a bunch of band aids at it. I would say yes. I would say in house. I think, like I said, Romy Gonzalez could be somebody that that play. I think he'll definitely play major league games at some point. The like the most I could see was is a is a waiver claim. There was a guy. Uh, I think the Marlins just DFA'd a, a middle infielder that had some promise. I think Red Sox stats threw that out there. But like that's what it would be. It would it would, it's certainly not going to be uh people talking about like short stops on expiring deals or from the A's or something like that. Like that's not going to happen. No, there's, we there's a 0.00% chance that any Red Sox fan goes, Oh shit, we got blank. Right. Exactly. No yeah. way. Like it's not that it's just patchwork until stories back. And God, I hate having to fucking say those words, man. I hate having to say until stories back. This was just not supposed to happen. We talked about it in the uh, uh, season prediction episode about how Trevor Story was like the biggest difference maker on this team. That if Trevor Story was a, a major key part of this team, that's that says a lot about where this team is at. Like if he performs to what he's supposed to, he raises the ceiling of this team. And if he doesn't, he drops the floor of this team. If he's not on the field, I think that's about as low as it can get. Like we talked about that right-handed bat in the middle of the order. And like, man, can story be that now we're talking about like, man, can we find a bat that matches Trevor story? Can you probably not like, we're not going to go out and just pull that out. And like, we'll get to the stats later, but like the offense is off to a pretty sluggish start. So uh, getting rid of, I mean, not only uh, a guy who has a high offensive ceiling, but a guy who's really been like the leader. I know it's kind of hard to be when you've been sidelined for a bit, but has really stepped up in this role. Obviously did the story camp stuff has been super vocal uh, with the media about the team. Uh, I think it was, it was him who was talking about the, the monster thing it was like, no, that's our thing. Like we will tell you guys in time. You know, I hope you can tell us now, but you're, you're also losing a guy who's super vocal, a veteran presence, a guy who was like taking the younger guys under his wing. He gets, Fucking really bad. I think it's like really, really bad. It's also a and, gold glove adjacent shortstop, and that's by far the biggest problem for me. And you saw it immediately in game two of this series. You saw it immediately what bad defense does. But I, before we get into the game, the, the games here, uh, ugh, let's take a quick break so we can move on from lamenting about Trevor's story and uh, break down these games a little bit. So let's hear from our good friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Prize Picks is so easy to play. I can make my Celtic picks and make my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Celtics and NBA fans, you can get in on Prize Picks in 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. On Prize Picks this week, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Price picks. All right, let's break down these games in Anaheim, in Los Angeles. Oh, God. This whole series is muddied. 
they won the series, everybody. They won the series. They're in second place in the AL East. Uh, and we're trying to stay positive about that. They won a bunch of games. I mean, they came out of this road trip, what, seven and three? Seven and, yeah, seven and three. Seven and three. Seven yeah, and lost three. two in Seattle, one in Anaheim. Yep, seven and three. Seven and three on a 10 game road trip to start the year. That West is just Coast. not bad. It's also what uh, what Kenley predicted after the A's series. He's like, yeah, we'll go over there, take two out of three. That's very funny. To, you, you shouldn't say that as a as a player. You, you should no. probably. That's very funny. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll probably lose we one did. over there. But whatever. Well, we said we said five and two. We can afford to lose one. But you get, you know, get off my ass. We gonna sweep every team. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it is so funny to be like, yeah. Well, I don't know. We'll probably win. I don't know a couple of them. <laughs> I'd love the sixty-seven percent. That'd be sweet. I mean, the higher than the Mariners' goals. Uh, game one. Game one of this series. Uh, now, there was an inning. Scott, I wish I, I always feel like Scott's short for something. It's not. Scott, I'm just Scott's short in, in general. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's, uh, there's, I don't know. Scotticus. Full, Scotticus. There's, yeah, Scotticus. There's a, there's a, there was an inning in this first game, Scotticus, that, uh, Something something pretty cool happened. Um, oh, I know. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened from my end. I'll hand up here. This is a moment of honesty. Uh, I'm sitting there waiting for this game to start because this game scheduled to start at nine thirty seven, and started at I think twelve fifty eight. I think it was two and a half, three and a half full hours that they missed this start time by. It was. Awful. I, I've never seen in Major League Baseball. I was texting a friend of mine who's like not a baseball guy. I was like, it is 20 minutes past. They still haven't started. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's that's weird. I'm like, no, you don't get it. They don't do this. They don't do this. This doesn't happen. Like, if a game is three minutes late, Will Fleming lets the umpires have it over the radio broadcast. He'd be like, this is an atrocity. This is disgusting unprofessional this game was supposed to start four whole fucking minutes ago and it hasn't 30 minutes i don't i want to go back and, and listen to what what will had to say because i'm sure he was going off but um, a lot of f-bombs i was surprised i was like i didn't think he could do this i mean he didn't add reason. Show. he kept swearing he did the stop and job thing and he was just sw- letting it rip the whole time or star market star market that's what it is Right, and yeah, he was it's just, the Shaw's and Star and, Market, Red Sox Radio and, Network. And he was he was just letting it rip. It was cussing. He was it was slurs. It was crazy. <laughs> as he should have. As he yeah. should have. He was he was with, well within his rights. It just goes to show, even the FCC doesn't listen to WEI. We love you, Will. You're the best thing that's ever happened to that company. Uh, that's, just a, that's just a little shot at the network, not at you. God bless you. Love you very much. Uh, looking forward to uh, having you on the show again, Will. Uh, now... Uh, because it was so delayed, I I had wanted to run to the market, right? I have a little market around the corner from my house, right? It's a little corner store. Goose, I'm talking right now. And I had been putting it off. I just I was just going to get like Doritos and a power rate, right? But it was important to me. I had already made up the my mind. You know what I mean? Like I'd already made up the decision in my head. I'm doing this. So now it has to be done, right? So I'm sitting on the couch, like jacket on, shoes on. And I'm like, I'll just watch the top of the first. And, um, then, uh, in the middle of the first, I'm like, oh shit, Mike Trout's coming up. I should probably stick. I'll watch Mike Trout. And also there's something about like, I I think it's more fun to watch Red Sox pitching right now than it is to watch them at the plate. I think there's a lot of stats that would back that up. And so I'm like, I want to watch, uh, I think it was Pavetta in game one. I was just trying to actively think of this, and I I was unable to. But it would, who would be right before Whitlock? Who's our three? Cutter. Cutter. Was Cutter. Cutter had to be Cutter. I I don't know why I have no yeah. recollection of this at all. It was Cutter. They're very weird. And uh, Cutter, I was like, I want to see. Him. I want to see. I want to see Cutter v Trout. You know, the highly touted matchup. And then I was like, okay, it's the middle of the Sox order. I can get out of here. Uh, I'll I'll run down to the market, come back, walk down there, came back. I had a text from you that said, mm-hmm. uh, "What is going on?" Is that what it said? Um, 
I think it was a little more something along those lines. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, you were like, Ho- holy shit, something like that. Yeah. And I yeah, got another I text that, that said, exactly. Yard City. Yeah. And then you said, and... what happened? I stepped out. <laughs> I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> I was like, oh, I no, nothing out, really. Three homers, dude. I missed, I missed that whole game. That was the game. That was a good oh. environment to be at a bar, first of all. Uh, that was a good environment to be at to be at a bar and to and mm. to just watch. I was getting up to get a drink, and I just went, "Oh wow, a new hit one." That was cool. And then like, I like give him my card, and another ball's in the air, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" And then Rafael got hurt, or got, he got hit by the pitch, and I thought he was he was dead, but he was fine because it was a hand. I got scared. Anyway, you can tell your version of the story. No, I mean. That was uh that was it, dude. It just I missed I missed all three homers is what I was getting at. Um, it just I, I felt like I needed to put my hand up on that one and just throw it out there. I fucked up. I missed. the race one was. I mean, you just don't see that coming, and it was just like like today he like pimped one, but. That one was just one of his little slapstick things, Dan. It just somehow got out there. And <laughs> we'll just be like, no way. That's impossible. We've talked about this before. I think we might have said this on the show, too. So whatever, just repeating ourselves. Reese McGuire's offensive numbers are all really good. Obviously, he's not, you know, he's not a slugger, but like his own base numbers are like really good. He's hitting like 290 something since coming to the Red Sox. He also leads the team, obviously, early sample size in RBIs right now. That's insane. <laughs> That's nuts. He's, he, I feel like he's played like four games. I, like I was going to say, has know. he played four games? It, let's see. It's got to be. His, he has to have played. Let's see. I mean, there's been 10 games. He's either played three or four. Okay. Th- so this says nine, but I don't know how many he started. Because the. Well, they well because like like for example, like he came in in like the eleventh inning or tenth inning against uh, Oakland. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He's put. He's definitely pinch hit. Uh, you know, they, they do the platoon catch thing. Uh, right, he's right, got a right. thousand ten OPS right now. He's hitting three thirty three. He's got he got a stolen base today, which is hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I forgot about that. Reese McGuire yeah. might be the heart and soul of this team. Are we sure he can't play shortstop? Is that beyond the realm of possibility? So. He's got eight hits and eight RBIs and eight strikeouts, twenty four at bats. <laughs> I think it's time we unretire eight. Put it on his back. Yeah. I don't want to change anything he's doing. Yeah. I mean, there's a there's a couple of guys on this team that you just don't mess with anything they're doing. Oh, oh, also worth mentioning. Jaron Duran came I back in this game. Go with. Yeah, and just he dyed his hair for jet black. I think he went for his original hair color, came out like Superman, but just dyed it back in the middle of like hitting with 390. He was coming off a 750 series, nine hits in the previous series, and he said it's time yeah. to change things up. That was crazy. That was risky. That was uh, – it doesn't seem to be affecting his play, but it should have. It should have. That should have screwed him, and it, we're glad. It's a good thing he didn't. It's so weird because Jaron is a guy who is forthcoming about his mental health um, battle, and he has – uh, in the past, talked about his struggle with like uh, getting past his um, his struggles, and you know he like because he had those you know in twenty two you, you know he had the, the thing in Kansas City and you know arguing with fans and all that. And you would think a guy like that, or who has dealt with those kinds of issues, would be incredibly superstitious. He was like, "Fuck it, I don't care." You know what's funny? Like, I don't need my hair. I don't. I could change anything. I could change my number tomorrow. Give me a new bat. I'll keep going. That uh, that inning in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the exact words I used, but I was a writer at Nesson at that point, and you have to be very careful about negativity at Nesson.com. And yeah. I said something along the lines of like he had like a disastrous inning. He if you remember, it had two errors and then tried to fight a fan. I feel like that was warranted vocabulary. Yeah. And they changed it, and they were like, you can't be doing that. And I was like, I right, well, okay. <laughs> it was like, it's going to be hard to – how else would you have liked to be to describe that? Am I supposed to pretend that didn't happen? That was, mind you, a, a game recap, 
And so to avoid that would have been difficult. Yeah. And that's not insulting. You didn't say like an embarrassing display of, yeah, not at all. It was, and I didn't even like the way I thought I was doing that was to just be like, yeah, he struggled a bit there. And they were like, let's chill out there. Can we calm down with the the slander, please? I'll never forget that. That was by far the most ridiculous. Now, there was one time they changed a title that was fair. Uh, There was a time when uh, uh, the Japanese reliever, uh, Sawamura, he had a throwaway Uh that was a walk-off. And yeah. I said something like Sawamura literally throws the game away or something like that. That was like the title. And they were like, yeah. you certainly can't do that. And I was like, that was fair. But it was funny. That's... I made me laugh. And it was like 2 a.m. So I'm going to do it. I mean, sure. Sure. I guess I get that one. But not, to not be able to say, dude, that's such a great peek behind the curtain at what Nesson is like. To not allow you yeah. to say that a two error one fight inning is not a disastrous yeah. inning. And they're like, calm down. Dude. Alex Verdugo had to pull him aside and be like, you're acting immature right now. <laughs> that should tell you all you need to know. That's the best part of all of that is the doogie was like, man, you're getting a little carried away. Like, hey, yeah. reel it in. It's not a position many find themselves in. But it, all of this is to say, all of this is to say, Jared Duran. Through through all that, just said, fuck it. I feel confident enough in myself. I'll switch things up. I don't care. This is on me, dude. This is what's in me right now that's doing this. This isn't anything else. So uh, cool stuff there. Cool stuff there. Um, now, for the rest of this game, uh, I mean, this was a this was a, a thriller. This was a thriller. An up and down one. Uh, obviously, story goes down. Devers takes a ball off the hands. Yeah. Um, Rafaela had that drop in center. Valdez bobbled that double play. Um, Wink uh, uh, gave up that grand slam to tie it, which was really cool, really cool idea on his part. Um, and then it just went back and forth. You know, Cassis had the rib. Chris Martin gave up his first run in 20-plus innings. And it was just back and forth. And it was a thriller. It was like they were hanging on to this game in which they just ostensibly lost their shortstop. And in my fucking ears, Scott, is the play-by-play announcer for that company you just mentioned asking, why the fuck is anyone watching this game? What are you guys doing right now? Why are you awake? Did you just wake up to like feed the baby or maybe you're just struggling, can't sleep, tough day at work, maybe? Easily the most exciting game of the series. I mean, of the year. I, back and forth, big, big lead, grand slam to tie it, and then more home runs to get the lead back. And I think they lost, didn't they, they get a lead, lose it, and then get it back again? Was it yep. Durant hit the the final shot or the uh, it was a grand slam to tie it. Cass yep. has put him ahead. Martin okay. gave up the tying run. Then the and Sox then took the lead back on the Duran. Okay, yeah, that was the that was the winning shot. Yeah, yeah, that was that's a. I mean, that sounds to me like an exciting game. And I do. I I was so just perplexed. I just couldn't get it. It's like, and it's it's a. Uh, I don't want to put too much energy into ragging on OB because I don't think OB is like a bad guy. I don't think he's, uh, I don't think he's a a bad play by play guy. I say it every time we talk about him that he's a, he's a great national broadcaster. But the difference between being a national broadcaster and being a local broadcaster is a relationship with the fans, and it just feels like he is actively stiff armed from the fan base and to it, it's it's so early in the year they haven't played at home yet dave this isn't like the dog days of the summer where you know a last place team in game 135 like last year last year in september yeah. ask me ask me in the third inning at 7 38 ask me then why the fuck are you watching this game because then i would be like man i don't really know because i do a podcast about this team besides that I probably wouldn't be. Like, then we can have that conversation. Game 
seven, eight of the season. I'm watching. We're watching because we care about the Sox, man. And the time they're six and two, they have the longest win streak in baseball. What are you talking about, man? It's that disconnect where it's like you, you are the voice of this team. You talk to us every night, and I hate they use this phrase. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use it to like invite us into your living room every night. Yeah, but like you are, you're, you're in my living room every night, <laughs> and there's still this disconnect of like, why exactly are you watching? Because we love the fucking team. We give a shit about the team. That's why we get mad when you get excited about opposing home runs. That's why we get mad when you're not freaking out about Red Sox home runs. Like that's, we have the same conversation over and over again. We want you to be excited about the Red Sox because we are excited about the Red Sox. Is that, is that not like the notch one in the job description? Yeah. No. I mean, I think the only thing he was referring to is just the, the time zone, but it's true. I, it's, I mean, it was it was a great. It was a it was it was, without a doubt, the most exciting game of the season. So that point in Joey's favor. I'd love to see this rivalry over, uh, over the course of the season. See how how this happens. You know how this continues. Because I feel like you're gonna have a couple more gripes with him this year. If I had to guess. The thing is, when we when when this show started, I was vehemently an OB guy. And I was like, no, people just need to adapt to him and he's going to adapt to us. And now it's been years. And at the time it had already been years, but now it's been three more years. And I feel more disconnected from Dave O'Brien. And I feel like it, the, an effort hasn't been made to connect with the fans. I don't feel like there are, like tuning into WEEI is fun. I love listening to be it Will and Lou, Will and Joe. Um, they they had a, a kid. I wish I could remember his name. I think his name is Tommy Webster. Might be messing that up. So sorry if I am. Uh, who did one of these games uh, with Joe? Uh, and, or I'm sorry, with Will Fleming. And they're fun. It's like I want to hear this conversation. I want to hear this banter. And like when I'm putting in what, you know, let, let's call it two and a half hours a night six nights a week it's like that's uh what 15 hours a week like i want to i want to be entertained by something beyond the uh the product on the field it's like that's a it's an entertainment product and it's i've been like quiet about ob it's like ah whatever I've, i'll accept it i was genuinely really like personally offended by that i was like what are you talking about why are we watching this game and and then it sets this precedent of like opening up that door, which as the play-by-play -play guy, like you are doing, you are leading the horse and, and your color guy follows you. You said something on the broadcast to the effect of like, yeah, man, I, I much prefer playing the game than watching it. And it's like, what are we talking about? Stop. <laughs> yeah. The, the booth has taken a hit. It, it definitely is. It's not entertaining to, to be fair. Yeah. Like I'm usually neutral on it. But there is the difference of a good broadcast does make you way more engaged. And I feel like sometimes you're like, like, I'll just put it on like fatigue of how much I watch baseball where it's like, yeah, I, I mean, I'm bored of this. I'm admitted like I'm bored out of out of market games. A lot of times, like I'm not sitting down mm -hmm. watching nine innings of like a out of market game. Uh, but you're right. Like the, it when you think of like, and obviously these were like good teams. When you think about like 2018, for example, I think of accuracy so quickly when I think about that whole experience. So having, and I do like the, the Lou Merloni games a lot. You know, I like when they, there's certain people that I'm like, Oh good. They're there today. But yeah, yeah. OB is kind of just a net, like he's a neutral for me, which isn't a, a great thing. He doesn't like irk me, mm -hmm. but he certainly doesn't add anything to me. Like for me, like at Monaco, actually, I think we could agree has a little more juice. I mean, I think, all Sox fans are regularly looking forward to Monaco games, Merloni games. And I think all off season, or at least at the beginning of the off season, when like, you know, before all the free agency stuff started, people were like, give me a Monaco loomer booth every night. And Uke, Uke is great. Um, I think Will's, I think Will's good. Um, I like Lou or I like Will in like a three man setting where uh, there's not too much pressure on him and he can just talk. 
and they can yeah. just talk ball. Like him and another former player is great. So like like Monaco Uke Will, that sounds great too. That sounds like an awesome booth. I think all those guys bring a lot to the table. And I think OB is a great national broadcaster. I really do. But uh he's he's this year off to a bad start for me. And uh, it's like this is the first year it might be a net negative. And it's like the fucking um it's the revenge of the Sith thing, man. Where I'm like, I was rooting for you, man. You were supposed <laughs> to be the guy. Took over for Don. Everyone doubted you. And I said, no, give him a shot, man. You're making me look like a fool. <sighs> anyway, that's my thoughts on game one. <laughs> game two. <laughs> game two. We lost. Game, game three. Sucks, I have like one note. <laughs> yeah, I have. Uh, I guess I have three, but it's not really. It's quick. Do them. Hit them. All right. So I have. Bad defense. That's my first note. Yep. Uh, the second one is, which I'll dive into in a second. The second one is just no whiffs because Garrett Whitlock just can't get swing and miss anymore. It's one of the weirder things that I've seen. I've never seen a guy just lose electricity so fast in his prime. Uh, a lot mm-hmm. of foul balls, a lot of just inability. To, I, I know I complained about this in at, to, like one of the first episodes was might have been the first where I was like, I, I'm scared of Whitlock because he doesn't get swing and miss. And if you're a pitcher that's pretty important usually uh and then i have uh i just wrote slayton dash dog he got a dog can i read you my three notes sure first note is a lot uglier defensively okay the second note is whitlock 101 pitches 37 balls four free passes five hard hits Third note, Slayton really could be the closer. That's unbelievable. I swear to God. That is, okay, well, then we're going to be on the same page. It's funny how much we don't, I mean, there is no discourse before these shows start because we don't want to go into podcast mode before. So that's funny because there isn't even like a, we don't even, we like the season preview is the last time I got a text, like we're going to do these topics. That's because you had to actually prepare. But we just go into this raw. And so that's very funny. The bad defense. The one thing I'll say, like the Devers thing was obviously the most notable screw up, the most important. I mean, it's why we lost game two. And yeah. that's him having to go to his left. And mm-hmm. that's a prime example of Trevor Story being gone, mattering a ton. Because if you remember when Trevor Story, like the big thing that they did to be like, he's like Devers is going to be less of a negative impact was like, just guard the line. And let mm-hmm. Trevor Story be Trevor Story, and you just cover less ground, and that'll be make everything smoother. And then now he's back to having to go to his left and and make plays to his left, which is we struggles at times. So him backing that ball up was crazy. Instead of charging, it was a weird hop, admittedly, but like that wasn't a play you look at and you go, "How did he?" How, like, of course, he didn't make that. Like it was very much like that's a that's a catchable ball. Yeah, I mean. Even if you go back to look at the play Trevor got hurt on in game one, like it was him moving really far to his left. Exactly. It was like that same spot. And like, that's where Devers knows like, yeah, Trevor's probably going to get there. Uh, And I think that that was the stutter step that you saw Devers take on that play where he almost has to readjust his setting of what he's supposed to do. You know, and they of, they never tell you to go backwards. Like they always tell you to, to go attack the ball. If you're if you're backing up, you're almost always in terrible position to field the ball cleanly. And taking the step back for the letting it take the weird hop, not how mm-hmm. the coach draws it up. No, especially once you start going forward. That's the other thing that like mm. like yeah, once you commit, right. yeah, once you commit to going forward, it's like that's what you're doing now. You can't. In no world do you go forward, stop, move back, and still make that clean play. Which, in fairness to him, he almost did. He almost did field it. Uh, you know, it wasn't wasn't uh, you know ugly. I mean, it was it was the whole play as a whole was ugly. But I'm saying like his attempt to field the ball itself in a vacuum, not a not a horrible miss. Um, but yeah, it was instantly felt. It was instantly felt how awful uh, the the defense was. Um, yeah, it just never felt like a winnable game. It just never felt like they were going to get going. The offense is what the offense is. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into some of the the, the team stats here in, uh, in a minute, but it's staggering just how different uh, the um, first 10 games of the season have played out versus what we expected. Game three, unless you have something more on game two, which I know you don't. No, you've heard my notes. All right, game three. Um, another three homer inning. Yeah. How that, crazy. I had that as well. That's that's pretty much all I had. That's it. It's uh, exactly all I have. I had two. Uh, actually, I have, I have one more thing, but let's oh, start oh, with oh. that. Uh, yeah, Hamilton, four hits, three homers. Absolutely insane. Um, and all three homers going to three different fields. If that if that does anything for you, I thought that was worth noting. Uh, but that happened. Uh, and Tyler O'Neill, who really deserves all the attention here, hitting his fifth homer, which is leading the American League and tied for the Major League Baseball lead. With Scott, Mo- not Mookie with Scott, Bats, but Mookie Betts tied. Me and Mookie Betts, me, Mookie Betts, and Tyler O'Neill for first. You and time. Mookie, uh, Tyler O'Neill. I just want to give you guys the slash line because holy cow, uh, he uh, is hitting 357 with a 514 on base percentage, an 893 slug, 1406 OPS with. Uh, seven walks, uh, two hit by pitches, uh, 10 hits, five homers, five RBI. That's crazy. Five homers, five RBI. I just noticed that now. Uh, weighted runs created plus of 278. I just, I have an additional note now. I just remembered this. I didn't write it down. When Mm -hmm. he got hit by that pitch, I thought for sure he was charging the mound. I don't know if you saw him like spin and then spin back towards the pitcher. It there, I, There's no way that pitcher didn't have a, a second of, oh, I'm dead. Oops. He, I, I don't think I've ever seen somebody so mad not take a step towards the mound. Yeah, he and, it, and he turned to face him, and then he was just like, what? he just started throwing his gear everywhere. That was that was fun, especially because that was a pitch where it like clanked off his gear. And it, as for now... I'm sure that hurt. That's usually how I, but, but for a major league baseball player that's been getting hit by pitches for years, I doubt that ranks in his top 10 most painful uh, hit by pitches. And it certainly wasn't in a moment that even could have been remotely intentional. So that reaction yeah. was like, the how dare you was so funny to me. Like the, just the, you did not just do that right now. Well, I mean, it was after he hit the bomb. He had already gotten hit once. It wasn't in this series, I don't think. But he did already get hit once this year. He just, just went deep. I guess I could see it. I don't know. I could see getting a little pissy about that. I mean, I know, I I would, I'd be pissed I would, every time. Yeah, I was just gonna say I would too. There's a there's a uh, video of me in college getting hit in the same front hip two days in a row. In the second time, I threw my bat aggressively and said something not directly to the pitcher, but loud enough that he could hear it along the lines of like, it's not that hard like to throw strikes. And I mean, yeah. like, so I mean, I'm not going to talk. I just was surprised because it like, it hit him in like the, the padded area and it was so unintentional. And, and there was a second where I was like, Oh my God, he's, um, he's just charging the mound right now. <laughs> like, and going to be the first guy off. in history to charge the mound over getting hit in the forearm with the pad on in a scenario yeah. where you knew it was unintentional and then just be like, like he, I don't know. I, that's just his personality though. I love that. And I yeah. think it, I think his offense is sustainable. I think he keeps those numbers through 162, 1400 OPS. Yeah. I think so. I mean, he's on pace for 81 homers right now. I could see it. I could see it. I think I, I, I would have to double check. I think it'd be a record. I don't think, I don't know if anyone's ever done 81. We'd have to look that up. Nobody knows the record, so we gotta we gotta double check that. We gotta yeah. ask the Maris family what they what they perceive to be the real record. Yeah, there's it's really that. kind of who you ask. It's a gray area, I'm pretty sure. Um, but that leads kind of perfectly for me um, into some of these team stats. Actually, you had something else on game three. I have one more thing, and yeah, uh, yeah. I think it extended the game about an hour. Uh, the oh, yeah. feeling that with two outs in the ninth to make two pitching changes by Washington and the boys 
was infuriating to me. The first one in particular, where he was like, bases loaded, two outs, and he was like, "We gotta, we gotta get out of this jam here." I, uh, it's I what eight to one, one at this point, nine to something like that, and over. I just, I just scored a hundred runs yeah. with two outs in the ninth, but the the fact that they, I just I saw him do that, and I was like, "We're really gonna." add three minutes of an ad, uh, go to commercial break, let the guy warm up to get one out. And then that idiot couldn't get one <laughs> single out. And it was, it was fun, but it was like, I was so ready to record, you know, I'm tired. This is a 10 game West coast road trip at the blogging podcasting. Like is not for everybody. And I'm just, you know, I'm feeling, you know, I'm sore after the 10 day road trip. Sure. And sure. Uh, 10 game mo- mo- more days than that. And I'm just, I was just feeling a little beat up. I was ready to go. And he just was, he just sent that asshole out there to just get smoked. I used to be on the Cardinals uh, and just, just gave up 70 more runs. (laughs) And, and and then they were like, we don't want to wear this guy's arm out too bad. Let's Mm -hmm. get Miguel Sano out here. Yeah. Which I thought was insane because the one guy that I, you know, you worry about the worst case scenario is you throw a position player out there to get hurt. The mm-hmm. one guy that probably hasn't thrown a baseball in like a month because he's just a certified DH. They were like, get him out there. And he's probably like, I don't, this kind of feels smaller. Like I haven't felt, I probably throw football more recently than a baseball and this feels weird in my hand. And, and then he, you know, he was able to get Duran out. No problem. What does it feel like to be that pitcher to be like, we got to get this schlub off the mound so we can get Miguel Sano out there? Yeah, I can't Stat. imagine good. Like, you're supposed that to use was... a position player in like a 15 inning game where you're like, oh, we in don't want to clean inning. We don't have any more I've pitchers. Ne- <laughs> I've never seen them do it like as the inning unravels, just be like, yeah. oh, Christ, <laughs> let's, get a, let's get a position player in to get us through this. Just I don't think I've ever seen for. that. It's it not was, what it's, it's meant a clean for. Inning. Yeah, that's that's not when you do that. And I was just when they did that, I was like, you and they didn't even cut the commercial because they're like, this guy's gonna throw two one more pitches, which he did. But mm-hmm. I was just sitting there like and I know they have to we have to pitch again. Chase Anderson's gonna do his thing. And that was the first time I was like, dude, they just gotta call it. Just call the game. It's over. Yeah. I mean I'm glad that they didn't cut away. I'm glad that they were like, you know what? We'll just leave this. This is fine. We'll just stick here. This game's over. We'll just let you let you guys hang out here with us. Oh man, that was really good. I don't want him the, to the get second too many change. Pieces. I just threw a fit. I just threw. I, I was just <laughs> like, come on, dude. What are we doing? <laughs> it's over. <laughs> just stop. oh. All right. Well, we got to get into these these team stats. Coming into Sunday's game, these stats are all from before Sunday's game, and I'll tell you that they're probably probably uh, very similar right now. Um, but getting the updated stats always takes about twenty hours, which is about just in time for the next game to start. So, getting updated stats on these kind of things is kind of hard. Coming into Sunday's game, the Red Sox had a team OPS. Of, do you want to guess? Team OPS. Coming into today. Coming into Sunday's game. Sunday. Yep. Sunday. I'm a journalist. I should know that to do that because you don't know when they're listening. Uh, right. 686. 678. Oh. Man. Yeah. Right. 16th in the majors. They were 15th. In uh, 15th and walks drawn and with 94 strikeouts, they were 25th in the majors. Uh, And then on the pitching side of the ball, they're third in walks, second in strikeouts behind the Dodgers. And then they are leading the bigs in whip. With 094, a 186 batting average against, also leading the majors, and a 142 ERA leading the majors by almost a full run. 
And unfortunately, those cool, fun stats all come back to Trevor's story. Because if this pitching staff is going to be this big of a surprise, the offense and the defense behind them need to be stellar and need to be what they were advertised to be. And obviously, we're talking about, you know, guys like uh, Hamilton coming up and immediately contributing and, you know, Duran being hot as shit and also good at baseball. Ha ha ha. And Tyler O'Neill being Superman. Uh, but to still fall into these numbers that put them in the uh, at best middle of the pack is not where they're supposed to be. They are supposed to be a top 10 offense in baseball. Uh, and uh, God damn doing that without Trevor story is going to be hard. Obviously Trevor hasn't done it here too. So it is weird to be like putting this pressure and this like expectation on a guy who just like hasn't been here and hasn't been that. Um, but he was in Oakland for this team, like this iteration. I know we're talking years, but for 2024, like he was, we've had three series. He was out essentially for one of them. And he was really good for one of them, like three yeah. doubles in, in one series. And they were all in like good moments. He had a, either a game tying or a game leading our, uh, double in, in that extras game. Uh, and, and he had been at least like a formidable offensive player in the like nine games he was able to play. And it's just, it's just very hard now uh, to picture the offense doing that without him and the, for the defense to be anywhere near what it was uh, without him as well. Um, and the top of the order is still really good. You know, you still go through like the big names, the big bats. Great. But when you got like Reyes and Valdez in your lineup or, you know, Hamilton and Valdez, uh, plus a catcher, it's, it's well, tough. the catcher is the best player on our team, so I don't want to hear that. But uh, unfortunately, uh, the catcher is not always Reese McGuire. So even today, 12 mm-hmm. runs scored, 11 Ks for the offense. Super yeah. concerning. Do you want a fun stat? Is it going to be really fun or is it actually going to be like a negative stat? Uh, it's a negative stat, but it doesn't really matter all too much. Uh, Bobby Dahlbeck okay. is 0 for 8 with 6 Ks. That is unsurprising. You got to get him out of but, there. He doesn't even make sense roster construction wise because you need somebody no. that could play. I guess he can play first and third, but I I don't know. It just it, it led to a weird situation in Game Two of the Oakland series, just not having the right infield depth. This, uh, I think it was game two of this series. Bobby was hitting fifth in front of Cassis. Righty what? lefty. Righty lefty. That's the most That's a important great thing point. in baseball. That's, That's the most important point. thing in baseball to some of these managers. And you know what kept happening is Bobby would strike out and then Cassis came up and like would get on base. That's like what happened like three times. So. Um, Bob did have a ground out that advanced a runner to second fielder's choice. Uh, so that did happen. So can't say Bob didn't contribute. If I was, listen, if I was in a major league box, dude, and I did that for the rest of my life, I'd be like, I fucking did something. I look at me. I helped the team that day. So that's something. Yeah. But the difference, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it mm-hmm. he's supposed to like, be a major league baseball player and and you are Joey. He's supposed to be um a, <laughs> he's supposed to be a baseball player. I don't know if he's a supposed professional. to be a major league baseball player. A yeah, professional, he's professional, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. He breaked in triple A last year. His best use in the organization. It just if it we're pisses talking me about off organizational every time. wins. It's like, AAA. dude, like you're you're here. You're, you've been fighting to get here. You just hit 58 homers in Worcester last year. You're here. Can you just like do it again? He's like, not. not even kind of, bro. I'm going to whiff. <laughs> even a little. Not even kind of. Like he had a four pitch strikeout. And I literally, I swear to God, I was literally like, you know what? Good eye. Like he saw one. <laughs> he saw one that was inside. Right in Good direction. Job. We're in the right direction there. That's four. There Maybe next time we go for five and. Let's follow one off next at bat. Let's get risky. And you know, yeah, you well, you know what he actually did? He saw a ball. Uh, and then he he fouled one. He looked at one. 
he swung through one. So I was like, there we go. Getting a feel for the game. We're touching, touching all the bags. Not literally, but no, checking all the not, boxes. Not touching That's any something. of the bags. Unless he like accidentally steps on home while he's like going over it. Like if he was on the away dugout and he hits the plate, that yeah. could happen. So he might have touched. He's not on, doing but... the, uh, you know, he's like. Uh, yeah, like he doesn't have time anymore. Play. Yeah. Or the camera's just not bothering to show it anymore. They're just like cutting away from it. I don't know why like, yeah, they would. Get back in the, <laughs> get back in the dugout, Bob. Uh, uh, it's it's sad because I like Bobby, but it's I love Bob. Tough to watch him play baseball and be like he's on our team. He just could have been great. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I can't sit here and lament about Bobby Dahlbeck, even though I really want to. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> series good. MVP. The Boston Red Sox won this series. Which I have to keep reminding myself. I'm saying that for my own sake. We got to pick a series MVP. Scott, I sent you a link really incognito a couple minutes ago about how I get yeah. these stats for the series because uh, it, it's really hard to uh, get them uh, unless you want to do some math. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to add up a B and try to calculate a slugging percentage. I don't want to do that. Um, but in front of you should be uh, the stats from oh, the past. Hmm? I got it. I got you it. Got it? I think it's I, an easy pick, is it not? And, and I'm glad, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm glad that you did this because last time to, to get the stats for the series, I just got super lucky that Oakland, the Oakland series started on April 1st. So I did the, the player stats in April. And this, oh, and I nice. remember like an hour ago being like, how am I going to do this? Because I don't know how to do this. There you go. There's the secret. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, I think uh, if you want, do you want to go first? I will. Uh, honestly, it was between two fellas for me. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, I'll tell you, one of my guys, seven RBI in this series. A stolen base, home runs, a 1,400 OPS. The other fella, three ribs on three homers, uh, an 1,871 OPS. Mm. And uh, Scott... The thing is, this might be one of the only times. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. This might be one of the only times that Reese McGuire qualifies to be the series MVP. I'd agree. Which means I I kind of want to give him a vote. But also, Tyler O'Neill hit three home runs. <laughs> he had a 571 on base percentage. Listen, I, I want Reese to get one, but I want him to earn it. This is Tyler O'Neill series. You know, I came into this set on my series MVP, mm -hmm. and you almost swayed me with these numbers. But I am going Reese McGuire because seven RBIs versus th three solo shots. They're very impressive to get three home runs in a series, but three solo shots. Who had a greater impact on the series? Reese McGuire in the first one, I mean, they both did the same thing, essentially. So you call that a wash. The three home run, three run homer today was massive. I mean, it didn't, I know we, they only scored one run in like the eighth inning off Chase Anderson, the best player in the world versus Chase Anderson. But it just, that, that kind of sealed it, I feel like. And that also allowed us to put someone like Chase Anderson in, reset the bullpen. The Hulk anderson combo is early on my favorite combo. The little reset the like bullpen it. day. And like so we used to, last year, have to stack guys because both pitchers sucked. And we needed yep. two pitchers to get one start. Now we're doing the Hulk Q6 scoreless. And then we'll just Chase Anderson, just reset the bullpen. And I'm way more of a fan of that than last year when they needed 
to stack piggyback starters. If you remember that phrase, I hope we never have to hear about that again. And uh, stapled stapled was the other one that they yeah. used a lot. You got to staple and, the guy to the back of the starter. Yep. So anyway, I mean, I know the OPS is 400 points lower and that, that would normally sway me here, but no, I seven RBIs in this series. He was, he had a huge impact. I think it's Reese. I love that. I love that. He stole love a bag. That pick. He's got way more, hundred percent more steals than Tyler O'Neill. Infinitely more. Oh yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, listen, I'm glad. I'm glad you did that. We needed a split series MVP for this again because we don't know when Reese is going to do this again. Probably next series because it's what he does. Yeah, but this wasn't a consolation. This was my real. This is a real Reese. That was a real vote. That wasn't a tiebreaker. Seven RBIs in a series. That's damage. Right. Well, beautiful stuff. That'll probably do it for the series recap. Yeah. Move on then. So thanks everybody for listening. No, because we um we gotta. We're not done yet. Got prize picks. No, we're not done. We're not done yet. Why not? Well, because Joey, we haven't done the pitching preview yet. Oh, okay, folks. It is Fenway opening day here for the Obo Sox game. One is going to be Corbin Burns versus Brian Bayo. Corbin Burns was acquired from Milwaukee following a change in Orioles ownership. Funny stat about him. Last year, he racked up an MLB record 58 Ks before issuing his first walk. Through two starts, he has 14 punch outs without giving up a walk yet. Brian Bayo gave up a couple of long balls his last time out and is coming back in a day game. Last year, his nighttime ERA was 306, and his daytime ERA was 694 in about half as many innings. Opponents hit 340 and hit 10 bombs in 10 day games. Game two! It's going to be Cole Irvin versus Nick Pavetta. Cole Irvin is still in search of his first league average season. Good luck! He is off to a tough start this year. Five innings. Four runs to start the year. Seven hits and two walks. Almost a whip of two. Yowza! Those stats do, of course, make sense when you know that those numbers did come against the powerhouse known as the Kansas City Royals. Nick Pavetta is Canadian. Or is he? No, he is. Just one run allowed in Pavetta's first 11 innings of work this year. 13 Ks and one walk. That is good for a 450 ERA plus. Is that good? An 081 whip and a 10.6 K per nine. Is that good? Game three is going to be Grayson Rodriguez versus Cutter Crawford. G-Rod takes the bump in the finale here, and here's something embarrassing. His last and only start at Fenway, he got the L against the September 2023 Red Sox. They weren't even trying, Scott. How do you do that? And rounding out the series is Cutter Crawford. The Sox pull out the big guns as Cutter Crawford makes his first start against an animal team of 2024. Six scoreless innings against these birds last year. The O's suck, and that is going to do it for your pitching preview. Uh, Scott, any, uh, any feelings about this series I don't like? opening day i think that it's uh, i think it's cool i think living in boston makes it suck i don't think i've ever been to an opening day where i'm like hell yeah i had a great time what a what a game they they uh they they lose them a lot uh and it's uh freezing uh any 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 thoughts i think it's kind of neat that bayo is getting both openers that is cool i think we Lose that one handily. Yeah, yeah. I think this. Uh, I think the birds. The birds look good. They also look a little ugly at times, though. They they've looked a little sloppy. So I've been watching. I've been watching some birds baseball, and uh, I mean they they threw the game away today against the Pirates with some uh, weird defense. They're young. 
which means they're fun and they're spry and they're fast. Also means they don't have a whole bunch of big league experience and they, uh, that shows sometimes. So who knows? But, uh, yeah, I like the Bay. I was getting them both. Uh, it's also I like I these. Believe... He's getting it against Burns. I don't love that as much. No, no. Uh, Monday, Monday, which is not the day that this game is. Uh, Monday is 64 degrees in Boston. Again, that's not the day of this game. That's but, uh, yeah, so helpful. Fifty. I <laughs> threw that out there. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why you didn't do the even... weather report. Yeah, we don't. We don't. Yeah, it's dicey. It's dicey. This is not a weather report. I'm just. This is just my own no, personal. Of I, just, I just. I forgot we're even recording. It looks like. Hey, Scott. This is just a conversation yeah. between you and I, dude. It looks like it's going to be like fifty-seven. Yeah, fifty-seven. That's true. Fifty-seven. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. I'm just planning for myself here. By the end of the game, probably around like 52, 51. Yeah, I won't be there, so who cares? That's weird. I am. I know, On yeah. the field, in the clubhouse, walking around, meeting folks. I wasn't. Come on up and say hi. Come on up and say what up, and uh, we'll Maybe send a picture a to Scott. Maybe I'll get a ticket. Yeah? Uh, so I know a guy. Maybe. I can get you in. I I got you in. No problem. That was easy. That was really easy to get you in. I had more like, trouble. Oh, Joey? Yeah, no, Joey, yeah. Come right in. Yeah. He's on the ITM podcast, right? That's what they basically said to me. And I said, yeah, so am I. Also, have the most viewed Red Sox site on the planet. But that's fine. It's okay. You take that one, Joey. They were like, are you, you, like, you going to post on Instagram, though? Or are you going to post pictures of batting practice on Instagram and be like, these guys rake? I actually I sometimes am. have. Yeah, I have sometimes thrown up. It's usually a picture, not a video. Maybe that's the difference. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not super thrilled. I have a feeling I could go to every single other game except for opening day without much quarrel. Or actually, the second game. I'm over 2, actually. So <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, not the second Last game. Last year. <laughs> Last year, I had no issue, but I have since lost my credibility, and that's okay. The opening series is tough to get into, dude. You really got to you gotta be in this for yeah. years and years. Yeah. You get it. I think we've got to really grind it up to get in there. Exclusive started the seating. Same, started the same year, though. Nah. So Not I, really. Yeah. And, I, nah. and I was, I'm the one that submits the credentials. Yeah. I'm the one that gets them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yep. It's that is uh hey man, I hope you have fun. Say hi to Steve for me. Uh if he's there. Um yeah, I don't think he talks to me anymore. So uh, <laughs> that's yeah. Uh, uh, so they'll, they'll be up they'll, they'll be up the in guys. their uh, steakhouse above the above the field, but that'll yeah, be fun. Well tell cool. everybody I said hi because I won't be able to. And surely take pictures of Joey and send them to me if you see him. Not like pictures of him. Like you're probably with him. It'd be kind of weird if you were just like. Well, I mean, I am. Talk shots so. will probably get one of you. He might get one from a distance and send it to you. I hope so. I hope he does. He did that with Steve a couple of times. He almost got us. Looking, looking forward to seeing him. Looking forward to seeing a lot yeah, of I would Yeah, I would love to see him on opening day. No, I'm looking forward to God, I'm going to see so many people that I just haven't seen. Just have a great it time. It sounds with fun. I used to love going on the field and stuff too. It's a blast from my memory. Blast mm. for the past now. You know what I love getting is the opening day ball that has the logo on it. Yeah. You can only get it. Oh yeah. man, I didn't even that think serious. about that because I because last year I actually I actually could have gone to opening day, but I let I figured for content purposes it made more sense to send you guys. And we only had two spots, so yep. I deferred last year. This year uh, they mm. deferred for me. And but hey, we're just gonna. It's fine. I got less credible this year. I only got more views. You know what's funny is uh, Tuesday. I'm also it's my first day credentialed at the Garden too. So I'm gonna go from Fenway to the Garden. It's like I got so a busy fun. day of being credentialed up. So that sounds so. F Have you ever gone in? You've never been credentialed. I've never been credentialed at the garden and it took like no effort to get into. They were like, they were like, yeah, come on in. So you get, you get your own like media entrance and it's pretty baller. 
I can show you where that I've is. heard it's nice. I've heard it's nice. Um, it's a better experience. Than Fenway? Oh, yeah. I can't believe that. You don't get to walk on the ice. You get to walk on the field at Fenway. It's true, but the seating, you have a desk with an iPad that's like like a, like a TV built into the desk. Yeah, and I like, see that. It, those are pretty cool, and the vantage point is pretty cool, and they throw out popcorn candy. It's a blast. That is that is a, a difference that I've heard that they basically have like catered, like, you know, they have like snack bowls, and then they have like a catered you, like meal. Catered and, is strong. And, they what the internet's well, good. If you do, if you do the dining, if you do the dining experience, like they actually have food there. But the like the food that's like on the ninth level, mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it. I would say you could get it at a movie theater. That's the oh yeah. The, it's mostly candy and popcorn. But the meal is they have like real chefs and stuff for the dining experience. Did Steve ever take you into the Fenway cafeteria, or did he like refuse to go into the press box like he always did with me? Uh, yeah, no, he never did. I, and I, and I always went solo. So I, I felt I never did either. Uh, I've been in the, like the press area. I did all that stuff by myself, but it was, um, no, I never did that. Yeah, I actually, you never did the dining. You never did the, we never, not once. I did it. You didn't do the uh, press box dining. Not one time. I dude, it was like the one thing. (laughs) If you're the Red Sox, stop listening. It was like the one thing I used my credential for, like a lot. There was a lot of times last year where I was basically just going to the games and I would, you know, I would get content and I would get, you know, some of them on the field stuff. But then like I basically just stand in the pavilion and watch the game. And then I would be like, I got to go up to the press box and get dinner. I didn't (laughs) know that. I didn't know that last year was going to be my last time credentialed. So I guess I would (laughs) have loved to do it this year, but I'm going to have to sneak in i guess yeah alas those days are behind you yeah well you shouldn't have written that shit you know exactly what i'm talking about they took it away for a reason i did i disparaged john henry on a nearly daily basis that is real um i i was quite critical on it but everybody is everybody does though that's certain if if dan shaughnessy can get in i should be able to get in that's that's where i would stand on that yeah and if it's it's not credibility and the thing is, like, those guys all work for, like, a John Henry-owned newspaper. Like, a lot of those guys, obviously not Catello, but, like, mm-hmm. uh, all the Globe guys are yeah, writing, like, what the fuck is John Henry doing? And John Henry is, like, paying for that paper to be printed, which is just very weird. But I guess cool that he allows that, but also, like, I don't think that that would keep you out whatsoever. Uh, so it's got to be something else. Maybe it's your personality. Um, <laughs> any... Uh, any uh, predictions for this series? Any thoughts? Any oh, well, well, record prediction? How about record prediction? I hate to say this, I'm feeling a one and three. Could see a split, but I'm feeling a one and three. Here's the thing: like, I I get it because like the Orioles lineup is is good, but like, Sox pitching is really good, and Cole Irvin. Like sucks, and he, Grayson Rodriguez. He doesn't scare me at all. Like it's not I that think, it's it's the it's that the one four two ERA goes away with David Hamilton and and Emmanuel Valdez up the middle, and now Devers having to be more of a third baseman than he was before. It's entirely the deep. If Trevor Story was healthy, I would say split, maybe maybe a three for one. It's I'm just so scared of what this. I mean, the the defense being historically bad again. It's because it's gonna come down with when you play good teams. It comes down to a few plays, and I think those few plays are gonna be. Remember that time that David Hamilton threw it to the wrong base, and the time that you know, Emmanuel Valdez could have just fumbled that ball that was hit right to him. Yeah, and I defense get, yeah, I is contagious. That. I think. I think the other thing too is is again. I it's gonna be like fifty something. But because it's Fenway opening day, it's just not going to be. It's going to be 28 degrees. And, like, that just doesn't lend itself to the long ball. It does, now that we're talking about it, make me think a lot more ground balls. And it does make me think a lot more uh, infield action. So that doesn't really spell good news for the Red Sox. So I don't think you're wrong there. 
And have fun, man. I'm gonna go. I hope it's not I'm too gonna chilly. go two out of three. Sox win two out of three. Wasn't that four? Am I stupid? No, there's, there's three. I heard you say split. I wasn't gonna correct you because I felt like I ragged on you enough in the last segment, but no. Dumbass. No, it's only okay. three games. I just oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Then then one and two is my prediction. I could have sworn you said three. There were three, four would have made sense, but I just I guess your pitching preview just sounded so long because it was so boring that I was like, there had to have been at least four Whoa. games. There was no fairy talk in that one. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at the Red Sox PR. Make fun of my mother before you make fun of my pitching previews. <laughs> I have, but I'm not going to do that on this show. <laughs> well, make damn sure that you never get in there again. Just got made fun of like my pitching previews. Have the power to do that. He might have the ability to do that. Apparently, <laughs> it doesn't take much. Uh, it's crazy what kissing some ass does. Looking really forward to seeing everybody uh, who works with the Red Sox this weekend. So uh, we'll see you guys there. And if you're at opening day, uh, come and say hello. Uh, or not. I don't care. Uh, thanks so much for listening, everybody. And thanks so much to Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. Uh, I didn't ask if you had any closing thoughts. I think we've just kind of gone through it, right? I had I had one. Oh, shit. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, it was right before the show started. Yeah. It was uh, as we were trying to figure out uh, what, what browser to use so that we don't have lag because that's what we do now. Uh, I got a message, a text from uh, – it was a picture of a fortune cookie. Uh-oh. And it said, your sports team will be very successful this year. And he's a Red Sox fan. You think they're talking about the Celtics or? No, because he is a baseball writer for me. And now he also covers the Cardinals for me. And at first I did think it was plural. He said, we're in luck, bro. Sox versus Cardinals World Series. So I just want to let people know that that's pretty wow. cool that that's going to happen. Wow. Sox cards. Book it. Yep. On book your tickets. Prize picks. The exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Way Network. Uh, yes, follow us on the socials at ITM underscore pod uh, for all of your World Series previews there. Uh, and we will be back. After this opening day series at Fenway Park, Sox and O's will be back uh, Thursday. Mm. Thursday? Yeah. Thursday. Yep. We'll be back Thursday. And in the meantime, <laughs> I'm Joey Gaboni for Scott Neville. Go Sox, kid. Mm-hmm.